When we finished the album, which uh, we did live, and uh, we did for like less than twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And no, twelve. Sorry, twelve thousand dollars. <throat> and uh, Clive heard it and said, "In no way am I going to allow you four guys to stand on a stage in front of your predominantly white audience and saying, time has come today. Hmm. Now, when the album came out, we weren't on the cover. They chose four white guys for the cover of the album. But we fought hard enough to get that covered when Jim Marshall took us to San Francisco and took the now existing album cover on Time Has Come Today. It was bad. What, why, how do you think they could have had the audacity, the record label could have had the audacity to hire, you know, four white, I guess, actors to pretend to be the Chambers Brothers on the cover of the album? They didn't want our black faces on that record label. Being played over there singing, Time Has Come Today. Now, because of our club appearances and all this stuff, San Francisco, you know, and everything, uh, this DJ said one night, after Time had made it out all over the world, the DJs had it, but they were asked not to play Time. You can't play this record. But that was the only record being requested. So they made a shorter version of this record. They chopped it up something bad. So one night this DJ goes on the air and he says, I'm probably going to get fired, but I just did something that I was asked not to do, to ever listen to or, pretend, or, pre or play this record on air. It's 11 minutes and 18 seconds long. And he played Time Has Come Today. And the phone hasn't stopped ringing yet. I'm telling you, he said, I don't believe this. Doing this record, especially after the second comeback of it, mm -hmm. I must have got 900 phone calls in, uh, in less, than, less than five minutes. The board is lit up. Every line is lit up. And who called him but the program director? He said, play that song every 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and yeah. that, was, that was it. And all over the world, you could hear tick-tock. And at one point in New York, it echoed through the buildings. You could hear it. You could, you could walk outside and just hear it echoing all through the building, but we still got controlled. We never got our freedom. We never got promoted once. Never got promoted. It, it's as Sony, as well. Columbia Records sent us to do a promotional tour, and we rent a big truck, and they sent us all these records, and they said, you are to go and sing at this mall or this store and give the records away. That was the way they promoted us. No spots on the radio or nothing. Go sing in front of, so we okay, this is cool. You know, but when we got there, the people didn't know we were coming. And to really clinch it, the one place that we sent us to where we were supposed to have a big audience was a vacant lot, you know? So we said, okay, we got enough gas to get home. Let's go. We got to go home. We were defeated, you know? But slowly, the record started to get recognition, and uh, we had top Ten, top three all over the world with this record, but they decided not to pay us. <laughs>